Welcome to the BetQL Daily Boost. I'm Lucy Burge of BetQL.com, and I am joined by Dan Carpuck and Rick Chapsky, and we have an AL East Division Exacta boost for all of you today on the Yankees to finish in last place. No, I'm kidding. Yankees to finish in first <laughs> place. Blue Jays to finish in second place at plus 310 at Bet Rivers. I like this because this is what I see happening. The Yankees will, because I can't, what other teams? Like the Red Sox are not going to finish in first or second, I don't believe. So I like the Yankees to finish first, Blue Jays to finish second. So this boost is kind of perfect. Yeah, I'm not too high on the Rays this season either. I think that we're going to see the Orioles, unfortunately, regress a little bit as they retool towards the future, get some prospects going. And the Red Sox, I think, are going to struggle a little bit this year. So it's really um, up to the Yankees and the Blue Jays here in the one and two slots. I'm really high on both of these teams this year. You look at the Yankees starting pitching, Garrett Cole, Carlos Rodon now, Luis Severino. When Luis Severino is your third best pitcher in the starting rotation, you're in a pretty good spot. Nestor Cortez, Domingo German, or Frankie Montas as that fifth starter. Um, a good bullpen, a powerful lineup with, of course, Aaron Judge spearheading all of it. You know, this team is going to be really good. The Blue Jays, Kevin Gosman, Alec Manoa, Chris Bassett they just added. Uh, Jose Barrios as their fourth starter, most likely. Um, you know, they added Brandon Belt, Dalton Varsho, Kevin Kiermeyer. Those are three left-handed bats that they desperately needed last season when they pretty much trotted out a right-handed heavy lineup every single night. So I, I love what both of these teams did in the offseason. I think these are two the two clear best teams in the division. And at plus 310, I love the value. We're going with an exacta today, huh? <laughs> Not a oh, trifecta. Yeah. Well, box. You know what the T, the T and T stands exacta. for trifecta. There, well, there you go. Yeah. And, and funny thing is, is that if you were going to go trifecta, I would put Baltimore. How about oh. that? I do. Oh. See I don't the, hate that. I do see the regression in Tampa Bay. And sorry, Lucy, I don't know if uh, Boston's going to have that good of a season. You know, but let's get back last, to. But that's okay. Aww, that's okay. <laughs> don't worry. Week okay. number one, I'm going to see Lucy walking around Boston, going. Red Sox World Series champions. <laughs> yes, in July. Yeah, you'll yes. still do it. He's going today, but in in July I'll be walking around outside saying that. Yes. <laughs> I do like uh, New York to finish first because of that starting rotation and 162 games as baseball is in the regular season. That's what gets you those victories is having a strong starting rotation because you're only as good as your next day starter. And then I like Toronto to come in second. This is the year where it all clicks together. Together in one word or one name, three names, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. That's the reason why Toronto, he was hitting the ball hard last year, just not taking advantage of that. But this year, I think he wins the home run hitting contest in regards to home runs in the season, not the oh. all star. Right? <laughs> most, most home runs. I was going to say season. a home run derby call preseason. No, 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 yeah, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. You just I'm getting, yeah, I'm in on that. All star game yeah. winner. Yeah. 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 My, my bad there. The vernacular was a little bit off, but yes, I think he's going to have the most home runs of this season because his hard hit ball percentage last year was through the roof. And so Aaron Judge had that amazing season but i think it's going to be vladdy this year so give me new york and give me toronto in the exacta watch him win the home run derby though that would be great <laughs> you heard it i would go first. back i'm saving this oh yeah this clip we will clip this and you heard it here first rick said it first get in on that at plus 310 at bet rivers and head to betql.com and get your free three-day trial today and check out our exclusive sports book offers there as well and follow us on Twitter at Daniel Carpuck, at RickCZ1, and at Lucio Burge. Our favorite bets for the future. So I'm looking at the Red Sox to go over 77 and a half wins, minus 110 at BetMGM. I don't think they will finish first or second in the division, but I think they can go over this win total. I like 80 games. I feel like that number just kind of feels right for them. The energy of this team so far is what I am going off of. And the players have started reporting to spring training, of course, and we are getting mic'd up audio as they're reporting. And the energy and the vibes <laughs> in this audio is just through the roof. So I can see that the meshing of this team, the cohesion is fantastic. Chris Sale is healthy right now, knock on wood. <laughs> 
and you've got leaders in Kike Hernandez, Rafael Devers, and again, those mic'd up videos of Devers. I will watch every day for the whole season because they are fantastic. And what this says to me is this team is going to be better than people think, maybe still not good, but better than people think. And I think they can go over on this win total. You got Bayo working out with Pedro Martinez of all people. So I have faith in that. And I think they pass the vibe check for sure. And they can hit the over on 77 and a half wins a season. I like it. I mean, if uh, James Paxton and Chris Sale stay healthy, they have Kenley Jansen in the bullpen. Got some more bullpen pieces, I I think. They could surprise some people. I like that. Um, I'm going to go the Mets under 95 and a half regular season wins. So I'm not sold on the Mets at all this year. I'm going to be honest. With Jacob deGrom gone, it's going to be Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander who just signed at the top of the rotation. Both of those guys are still as dominant as ever when they're out there, but they're both almost 40 years old. They've spent time injured in recent years. Should we expect either of them to come close to 200 innings at this point in their career? I would say no. I think they're going to see some, you know, get some periods of time off throughout the regular season as well. Other than them, the other guys in the starting rotation, Jose Quintana, Carlos Carrasco, Tyler McGill, David Peterson, or Kodai Senga, who they signed from Japan. I, I'm not really sold on that at all. I'm also not in love with their lineup. Yes, Brandon Nimmo re-signed. Jeff McNeil um, is also there as a solid on-base guy. But outside of Pete Alonso, there are no proven power hitters on the squad. Francisco Lindor had a good season last year, but he's been inconsistent in his time in New York. Starling Marte is always injured. Guys like Daniel Vogelback, Mark Canna, those are platoon guys. Eduardo Escobar, not I don't really trust him. There, you go up and down this roster, and I don't see ninety five over 95 and a half wins as a as a logical option. I think um, I wouldn't be shocked if they completely missed the playoffs, honestly. I think the Braves are way better than them. I think the Phillies might even be better than them, especially when Bryce Harper returns. So uh, I'm going to go under uh, 95 and a half wins for the Mets is my uh, best bet here. Wow. I'm going to stick in that same division there, Dan. And you talked about the powers that be in that division with the Mets with the Phillies and with the Atlanta Braves. I agree with you on that one. I think Atlanta wins that division and even the Miami Marlins. I love the Marlins. Pretty good yeah. squad. Uh, so who does that leave? That leaves the Washington Nationals. And that Aww. is where I am going in my future. <laughs> and, and when you said that, Lucy, that we're going to head to the future, I wanted to dim the lights, put my uh, flashlight in front of me and just start singing in the year. 2000 which was the old <laughs> Conan bit there I know I, god I loved the year 2000 that kind of always be ready with the flashlight with those, Rick with those Conan <laughs> bits there um but Nats under 59 and a half is my play Dan talked about how good that division is last year I think the Nats have lead won 17 games in the division only it, it was horrendous now they don't have to play as many this year with the new balanced uh schedule that major league baseball came out with but they still shouldn't be able to compete in this division they have no power in that lineup they're gonna go with a youth movement and in baseball nowadays you either win or you want to lose there aren't many teams that are in that middle that like to be in the middle so i think the nats at the uh, trade deadline are going to be like, okay, it's time for us to lose. They're going to let their young players play, go through slumps like that. And you still have Corbin on the mound in this <laughs> rotation. And if for any batters out there, they know Patrick Corbin Day is a holiday oh, in yes. the sports gambling world. Let's fade Patrick Love Corbin. It. Strasburg, who knows when he's going to be back. The catching position isn't really good. So all those together, the Nats do not win 60 games this year. They only won 55 last year. So you're telling me they're going to be five games better this year? No, no way. Rick, you, you mentioned you mentioned Patrick Corbin Day. Lucy and I used we to love it. got into song oh, yeah. ourselves in unison on Patrick Corbin Day. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah Easy so. fade. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Get in on that. And I'll look ahead to all of these futures and this boost at Plus 310. And subscribe to the BetQL Daily Boost wherever you get your podcasts.